everyone and welcome back to my channel um you may notice it's a bit of a different background it's getting a bit dark now um but i'm here in the incredibly beautiful very pretty and scenic somerset uh mine had to be precise so i had a comment on one of my videos from a little while back from probably from when i visited here or when i visited bognor i've not um, actually checked which video it's actually on however the comment was asking as an autistic person about struggles like, like sensitivities um and like for a day and um if it was carers tickets and stuff like that so I just thought i'd kind of make this video sort of just talking through my struggles and other things that i've thought about that you could have struggles with um, that I don't particularly um, and also I'll give you the information on the carer's ticket because yes they do do them for day tickets um, and I'll tell you a little bit later on in the video so things that I struggle with as an autistic adult I would say um, sound is my biggest demon <laughs> um, my sound sen sensitivity I have really bad weeks really bad days and then I can have really, you know, good days, good weeks where all's good. It doesn't bother me so much. Um, but the times when it's really bad here is if I can go inside the Skyline Pavilion. If you don't know what the Skyline Pavilion is, it's the big white tent. Everyone calls it the big white tent. It's a Skyline Pavilion. Um, when I go in there, it's a hive of activity constantly, all day, every day, which is great. And it's where all the action kind of happens. Um, but when you're autistic, you've got like lights from all the shops. You've got um, sound from literally everywhere in there. And it's kind of amplified. And then you've got all the people, holiday makers, um, red coats or whoever's about at the time and it can be very very busy um, so if you don't like a lot of people um, there are certain times when it's not as busy and it's not as loud and it's very very nice to be in there um, in there then uh, I would say early morning um, early morning probably just after dinner as well or about tea time ish when everybody goes for like food because if you're here and you have a food package you will go for your tea at a certain time and in those times if you've not got any shows booked it's nice to be in there then because it's a little bit quieter but yeah in terms of like lots of people that's a struggle in terms of sound sensitivity huge struggle um with my sound sensitivity and especially in the dome I don't struggle with it as badly now. I used to, and even a couple of years ago I did. And I bring my ear defenders with me all the time. I have never seen any autistic adult with ear defenders on. So essentially, nobody ever looks like me. That for me is a huge issue because I then feel like I then have to continue to mask my struggles and not use the aids that I need to accommodate myself and to help me to have a good time or a better time and feel good. I always see kids, like young children, with ear defenders on and that's fine because nobody bats an eyelid, they're a child, of course, you know, they're going to have ear defenders on because it's too loud for their little ears and stuff like that. So nobody really bats an eyelid. But when you see an autistic adult with them on, all of a sudden you get looks from people, not like stares or anything necessarily, but people just give you a look as if to say, what's she wearing them for? What, what are they for? She's a grown woman. You know, that those kinds of looks, those kind of preconceived notions of what autism looks like, because of course you grow out of autism when you're 18, you know? Um, who doesn't? <laughs> um, so that has in the past stopped me from putting my ear defenders on when I've really desperately needed them on. Um, there are a few times where 
not this break in particular, but there are a few times where I've thought, oh, I really need to put them on, really need to put them on. And then I look around and I'm constantly looking around. Nobody else looks like me. So of course I'm not going to get them out. And of course I'm not going to put them on. So instead, I do have a pair of loops. Never thought I'd get on with them because they go in your ears and I'm really funny about things in my ears. But actually, they are really, really good. And especially here at Butlins, they are brilliant. So I would say if you can handle things in your ears, get a pair of loops because obviously they're not as obvious as big ear defenders. They're in your ears. Nobody can really see them. They're very discreet. Um, you can still hear everything that's going on. You can still be part of the action, but just at a much reduced level, which I like, and that really helps me, um, especially on my worst days. I will always have them in my ears and they're a godsend. What else do I struggle with? So this isn't actually something that I struggle with, but I did think if you were going to come here and it was your first time and you'd never ever been to this resort or you'd never been to Bognor Resort or Skegness, you will struggle with knowing where you are and knowing where things are on the camp and how to get to different places. Um, so plan ahead is all I would say. Use the apps. So there's a Butlins Minehead app and a Bognor and a Skegness app. Make sure you get the right one for the right location. And there are maps on there and you can pinpoint exactly where you are, where your accommodation is and where every single venue is. So you can sort of figure out the resort before you go. Um, I don't know why I didn't take my own advice with that. I should have done that for Bognor, but I didn't. Um, but anyhow, here we are. Uh, we, I survived because I'm, I'm here and I'm at Minehead. Um, what else would I say that I would struggle with? Probably routine. I know. <laughs> when you say routine and you're on a holiday, I get it. I know, right? But I, um, to be honest, the last few days I've actually gotten up at round about the same-ish kind of time every morning. I haven't put an alarm on. I'm not a saddo, don't worry. I just wake up at those specific times because either I'm hot or I need a wee. <laughs> There's no two ways about it, you know? Um, so routine is another thing I really, really struggle with. And trying to keep some sort of routine of, especially when I'm out and about. Like I find eating is very difficult when I'm on holiday and drinking, especially drinking enough. I don't, and I don't even drink enough when I'm at home. I know I don't. And when I'm working, I know I don't. And I know that's something I really, really need to work on over the coming weeks. But um, it's difficult because on holiday, you can you eat different things to what you would eat at home. Even though they're, they, they're your safe foods and you've worked out what you like and what to have from where. Which is another thing. I always work out all the things that are safe for me and from where, and that don't have an effect on me in terms of going to the toilet. Um, I know that might seem TMI, but um, a lot of people like myself, a lot of autistic folk like myself, um, have very sensitive stomachs and um, gut problems, etc. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I have to really be careful of. Um, even this morning, I actually worked out and I said to my sister, um, I had a bowl of cereal and I had to eat it dry, um, which I don't mind doing because it's Frosties and they're the, um, they're the sugared ones, you know, I love them. But normally I've been having them with milk and then I've gone, hang on a minute, need to go to the loo. This morning, had them dry, no milk and I was fine. And I was like, ah, it was the milk all along. So there you go, lesson learned. But here, I would say nine times out of 10, do not get the food plan. Just don't do it to yourself. Even though when I first tried their food plan, I loved it because it was beige foods. My stomach did not love it. I did not love it. So my personal advice would be, if you're autistic and you're thinking food, don't get the dining plan stick to what you know and get your safe foods in and um, get a comfort apartment where you've got a kitchen you can cook for yourself or if you've got somebody um, who's coming on the holiday with you they can cook for you no problem 
Uh, there are shops, um, supermarkets. There's a couple of supermarkets on site. Very expensive. Don't do that to yourself either. Um, there's Tesco. There's Lidl. There's Morrison's. Literally about five minutes walk, five, ten minutes walk down the road. Uh, if you're in a car, five minutes. Not even that, two. Um, so I would go there. Um, I know I resorted last time when I had a dining plan to go into McDonald's for breakfast because I knew I was going to be fine. Um, so that just says it all, really. But there are workarounds if you don't have a kitchen and it's just a room and you're struggling for food. There are workarounds. You can get nibbly bits, you can get snacks, you can get sandwiches, you can... Um, there's McDonald's, there's Lidl for bakery items, there's um, there's pubs in Minehead's town, like Weatherspoons, for example, the Duke of Wellington. Amazing food. I would highly recommend them. So do your research on your safe foods and what is available here for you or in Bognor or Skegness for you. Where can you get it? Is it easily accessible? And what is the cost? That's what I've what i would say um to check and look out for um what else would i say so i've done food i've done routine um let me think i would probably say travel travel is a big struggle that's before you've even gone on holiday that's getting from your house or wherever you are to the resort um i do drive However, I don't drive here or to Bogna or wherever it is, um, mainly because of my anxiety and not knowing where I'm going, new journeys, all that sort of stuff. So I get public transport. So that has to be um, an added extra um, price wise onto your holiday that you have to account for. And then not just having to account for that, but you've got to think, right, where does this stop? Where do I get off? When I get off, how do I get to my final destination? If there's any changes or anything like that, you need to know where you need to be at what time and how to get to your actual final destination. Um, so planning for that as well. A lot of it, I would say, is planning ahead, really. Um, what else do I struggle with? Shows, probably. Um... In terms of, again, it's the routine factor, I think. When a show says it starts at seven, but doesn't start at seven, it starts at like five past or 10 past. Yeah, it's only five minutes or 10 minutes, but still it's that routine of like, you said to me, it was starting at seven. I queued outside for 45 minutes to sit in, to take my seat, to wait another like half hour, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is you to start the show and then start the show late just come on whenever you want you know um so there is that as well i'm trying to think what else swimming oh my word okay swimming swimming is a big thing that i really i do really really struggle with um i haven't found any workarounds yet but if anyone does have any tips or any workarounds i am all ears and um I look forward to hearing from you guys. But um, swimming here, I love going swimming. Bear in mind, I am an actual water baby. Love the water, love being near it, in it, around it, whatever, love it. Love going swimming. And I like to go splash when I'm here, but it's so big and so loud and so full of people continually. And then they try to put on like tracks and be a DJ and put music on. But I kind of can't hear the music. And then they try to like, they blow whistles. Like if there's kids like getting into trouble and they need to save them. Or then there's like the alarm for the wave machine. And it's just so much constant noise that I literally feel as if I can't hear any single thing. Even though I can hear everything, if that makes sense. So it's very overwhelming and overstimulating and I don't really last that long in the pool unless I can go round the lazy river that's like my favorite thing so I don't necessarily go to the swimming pool here to swim I go really for the lazy river and just go round and round and round about I don't know how many times 
Um, if I last an hour, then that's brilliant. And an hour, an hour tops is, is fine by me and normally fine by my sister too. So that's all good. Um, you did ask, or somebody did ask about carer tickets. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know these were a thing and I actually had to research them myself because I'd never heard of them, I'd never seen them. Um, and I didn't know if it was something that Butlins do or cater for, but they actually do. So when you go, um, it's something that you have to do beforehand. So you have to get in touch with them. Um, I don't know whether you have to tell them you're getting a carer ticket or buy the carer ticket. There must be a way to do it where you either get in touch with them or buy the carer's ticket. And then what they'll do 48 hours before your planned visit, your day visit, they will ask you to send all your eligibility criteria to them. Um, and obviously they'll, they'll sort all that out. There are also discounts for blue light holders as well. Um, I think it was 25, 20% or 25%, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but go on the website um, and, and search all that yourself because obviously it's not something that I particularly know about or use. So I don't know the ins and outs of it and how that works. With regards to day visits, um, I know Bogner Regis did day visits when we were there last October. I had to think then. Was it really that long ago? Um, they did day visits pretty much every single day, if I'm honest. I don't know about Skegness because I don't go there. I haven't been there in 10 years plus. So I don't know what they're like. Here in Minehead, I have never seen day visits here happen ever. Um, years ago, they used to have day visits and I don't know how it works now. Um, so I don't know how to book the day visit for Minehead, but there must be a way on the website that you click which resort you want and you click your dates and you book it through there, I would assume. Because on resort years ago, they used to have this um, entrance here that would say day visits and you'd go in there and you'd pay for your day visit and it would give you like all the, how much it was and whatever. Or before that, they used to be a little hut um, just before you came into actual Butlins Resort which would say day visitors and you go up to there and get your day pass but all of that has changed now um i wouldn't even be able to tell you what color the day passes are to be honest or how to get them like i say i would assume just go on the website type in but is day visit and just select your resort i would assume i don't really know because it's not something i've done but i would love to do that one day maybe go to skegness for the day why not um I think that is everything and I have rambled in this video, I apologise, but if you want to know anything else about Butlins or what I struggle with or what I think you guys would potentially struggle with, then please do feel free to ask away. You can ask me anything and I will try my best to either answer you in a comment or like this, I will make content for you guys that you've asked for because this is why I make my content. It's not just for me, but also for you guys. And I know you guys love watching and I love talking to you guys. Hope this has been really helpful and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye.